Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. It's the beginning of another work week. Yay! <laughs> I don't know why I even say that because it's seven days a week around here. Although we had just a wonderful, wonderful uh, 80th birthday weekend for my mom. Just, you know, tons of celebrating. It, it was pretty much nonstop all weekend and uh, just loved, loved having my kids here. Um, it's pretty sad when your kids grow up and move hundreds of miles or thousands of miles away. You don't get to see them all the time or talk to them every day. Um, you know, and it's amazing how time flies and you can, you know, three weeks go by and you think, geez, I haven't talked to my son or I haven't talked to my daughter. And uh, I have to say, if it wasn't for Facebook, I would have no idea what my kids were doing from day to day. And my mother is really, really active on Facebook and reads every single post and every single word. So um, she knows what my kids are doing and then she'll ask me questions about what they're doing and she knows more than I do. <laughs> so it, it makes for fun conversations. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyway, it was great to catch up and have everybody here. And my mother, hi, Finland. Um, my mother was just over the top happy with all of the, um, birthday wishes from all of you and the cards and flowers and, um, thank you so much. It really, really meant a lot to her and, uh, her, her little, uh, moment of fame. So really, really fun. Hey, South Africa, sunny South Africa. Oh, I, you know, I want to visit there. Is it dangerous there? I worry. Uh, my daughter really, really wants to go to Af Africa. Um, so send me some information about that. She really wants to visit there. She's going to Spain in a couple of months and we get to babysit Mila and I have to say we were really really bad grandparents uh, Mila had so much fun running around in the yard when she was here because uh, Gwen lives in an apartment and poor Mila has been on house arrest for the past month because of her uh, partial tear on her ACL and um, you know bad grandparents that we are we opened the back door and said go have fun and she did and she you know chased the miniature horses from the other side of the fence and uh, thanks Siri um, just, you know, she was just crazy. And I, I looked out at one point and I saw her out there just doing figure eights and spinning. And our yard is really uneven because of some work we had done. And, um, I thought, oh my God, you know, we've ruined her four weeks of house arrest for her ACL. And yeah, she was pretty sore. So before Gwen left, I, you know, felt guilty. So we drove to the clinic and we, took x-rays and made sure everything was okay. I x-rayed her hips and her knee and we did cold laser and acupuncture and I gave her some more herbs. <laughs> so I hope she's okay because I felt bad. <laughs> but needless to say, Mila had a really good time at grandma's house. It's kind of typical. You know, I remember when I used to drop my kids off at my parents' house when I was at work and I'd, you know, go to pick them up at, um, 10 p.m. and my kids would be running around like crazy and you know with donuts in their hand <laughs> and I think you know this is what grandparents do um, anyway <laughs> so uh, speaking of uh, moment in the sun and fame I am over the top happy there was a um, a reporter from the New Jersey News Network that came to Monkey's house about oh, a week and a half, two weeks ago. It was two weeks ago now. And wanted to do a three-minute segment on the New, Jer New Jersey News about um, uh, Monkey's house and the good work that's being done there and all the dogs that have been rescued. And they um, did just a phenomenal job. The reporter was there Oh my gosh, for probably three hours and, you know, took just a ton of footage to get that three minute clip. But then they worked with it even more and they made about a one minute uh, video of Monkey's House kind of as a commercial. And, um, you know, and it's a promotional video that they've given Michelle permission to use wherever she wants. And so we started posting it and sharing it on Facebook and it has been seen just about eight million times times which blows me out of the water it is so amazing so and what amazes me is that Michelle and her husband had a, a dream just about two years ago almost exactly two years ago they had this dream of putting together a senior hospice and sanctuary rescue for 
old dogs with nowhere to go with terminal diagnoses and um, in two years that dream became a reality and a, a way of life and a method and Michelle gives me a hard time all the time and she said we need to publish this you need to write a book and we need to call it the Morgan method and I said first of all nobody's gonna buy a book called the Morgan method because they have no idea what it is so we're gonna have to come up with a much catchier tighter title but you know Michelle put together I, Michelle and I met because she went to one of my food seminars that I was doing locally and um, she, it changed her life because she had, she's a nurse by, uh, by profession and she's retired now, but she had known for a long time that uh, healing food and homemade food was really a way to bring about healing for her own animals. And so she started experimenting a little bit with things on her own, but she knew she wasn't making balanced diets and she knew that she was just, you know, sort of throwing things together. She's Italian, so, you know, she, she loves to throw things together in the kitchen. And she knew that there had to be a better way. And when she went to my seminar, she said it was life changing and she felt like she finally had the tools to be able to go home and actually put things together from a medical perspective as far as what the animals needed and so she you know since then has come to pretty much every seminar I've done that's within a hundred miles of home for her and uh, then she came to me with the idea for monkey's house and the dream for monkey's house uh, but it was still just a dream and um, when Scout and Freckles needed a place to go, I emailed Michelle and I said, can they be your first um, inmates at Monkey's house? And she said, well, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. And I said, okay, well, I'll keep them for a couple of weeks. I'll you know, do their medical stuff and put them back together so that they'll be ready to go to Monkey's house. And in that two weeks, she and her husband got some friends together and they went through and they cleaned out her feed room and her tack room and her garage, which are all attached to the house. And they put in some, you know, special little, good morning, Dave, uh, put in some special little rooms um, so that, you know, new animals could be isolated when they came in because God forbid you bring somebody from the shelter who has kennel cough. And literally within a couple of weeks, got everything up and running. And then as you all know, Scout and Freckles never left our house. But because we had pushed the envelope and made Michelle and Jeff get things going, they were then ready to start taking in dogs. And the next thing I knew, my phone was just binging every 20 minutes with Michelle with, do you think this dog is a good one? Do you think this dog is a good one? And she started sending me pictures and people started contacting her. And Monkey's House was born. And from there, Monkey's House has just blossomed. And we've gotten a lot of publicity. I work with a group called Harrow, which is help a reporter out. And so a lot of times reporters are just looking for feel good stories or, Abby, you want to get down? Okay. Um, or they're looking for um, stories of rescue, um, different ways to do things. A lot of times they're looking for stories about food and how food can heal or how raw feeding is good for dogs. And, you know, then just as things fell into place and I started working with All Provide and then they were, you know, when I, when I went and talked to them originally, I said, look, you know, you can use my name. I will endorse your food, but you need to help me out with my charity. And they were so awesome about getting on board and sending food. So what does the Morgan method entail? The Morgan method really is every dog that comes into Monkey's house gets a full veterinary exam by either myself or my associate, Dr. Michael Anthony, uh, because we both do the Chinese medicine. We assess the dogs, and Michelle has become very good at assessing these dogs, figuring out whether they're too hot or they're too cold, looking at their medical issues, figuring out which foods we need to treat their medical issues. And they are never fed processed food as far as canned or dry. Um, they're either fed raw or they're fed homemade or they're fed a combination of Sometimes Michelle will use the all provide as a base and then she'll add some ground turnips or some ground radishes or some mushrooms uh, or some golden paste or some pumpkin 
depending on what we need for each individual dog. And if you look at the video, there's 24 bowls out on the counter and every bowl has something different in it because Michelle tweaks everyone's diet. And um, we're not big on vaccinations. We do not vaccinate at Monkey's House, although sadly, because most of them come through a shelter, um, they, you know, they land at the shelter. They're given a death sentence with the, oh, they're not adoptable. We can't do anything with them. But here, since they're here, we're going to give them a DHLPP, Bordetella, Influenza, and Rabies vaccine. So the poor things, their immune systems are shot. They get 15 vaccines when they hit the door. Um, and then in the middle of the night, Michelle is running and getting these dogs, or one of the volunteers is running to get these dogs. Um, so, you know, we, we know that we're dealing with immune systems that we have to make better. We have uh, part of the Morgan method is we get rid of nasty, rotten teeth. We get rid of tumors that are life threatening. We will do surgeries on these old dogs if it's going to enhance their quality of life. And um, someone got really upset with us because we do spay and neuter these older dogs. Here's the thing. 24 dogs living in communal area cannot be intact. Females coming into heat, males with male hormones, it would be a nightmare. And we don't want to isolate dogs. We don't want to have dogs that, um, you know, can't be in the general population. Because when you go to Monkey's house and you sit in the living room, there are 20 dogs sitting in people's laps, um, getting snuggles, snuggling together in beds. So, um, you know, if it would be too, uh, too much of an anesthetic risk to put the dogs under to get them spayed or neutered, obviously we would not do that. And we do have a couple that we haven't done that. But, um, you know, if they can handle it, we ha that's something that we have to do. So I, I understand when people say from the other side of the fence, hey, it's an old dog. But you know what? Here's the thing. Some of these dogs that come in are 14 or 15 years old, but we can keep them alive for one to three more years. And we need that to be a high quality of life. Look at Scout and Freckles. They were 14 and a half when they are 14 years old when they came to us. They're now 15 and a half years old. They are awesome, and they've both been under anesthesia multiple times. Scout just had a dental procedure and his ears flushed. He's going to go get surgery on both of his ear canals. Freckles has had mammary cancer. Uh, Scout had a cancerous toe removed. Um, you know, I'm not afraid to put these guys under anesthesia. We do it very carefully, but we want their quality of life to be the absolute best it can be. So that means not having rotten teeth in their mouth, not having ulcerated tumors. So the Morgan method is really all about the entire quality of life. The dogs went to the beach this weekend because it was nice. They went to the park the other day because it was nice. It's all about their emotions, their um, interaction with people and other animals and living in a home environment. So when we talk about doing something holistically, we're talking about the entire package. That means good health, good diet, good psyche, um, you know, good environment for them to live in, doing what is best for each one. Um, on one video, Michelle talked about how she plays games with the food. She smears it up the side of the bowls. And I laughed hysterically. That was one of the videos that I did a Facebook Live with her. And I just laughed hysterically. And she said, well, you know, this dog likes to gobble their food and this slows them down and makes it a little bit of a game for them. So, um, you know, it, it really is finding, and Michelle is just so good. She knows the personality of each dog and what it takes to to make their life 100%. And, you know, for some of these dogs, when they're in those final stages, all they really want is to be held in someone's lap. And Michelle, if she's busy, she'll call a volunteer and say, Stat, I need you over here right now. I need you to sit with this dog, snuggle this dog in your lap, wrap them in blankets, and just be with them because it's really important. And, you know, people say, oh, I think it would be so sad to be in that environment with dying dogs. These are not dying dogs. These are dogs that have um, life-threatening illnesses that are living, living life to the fullest. And it's a really, really happy place to be. So, um, you know, it, I, the fact that this video has hit almost 8 million people just blows me out of the water. And somebody said on my page yesterday, 
Just imagine if every person who saw that video sent one dollar to Monkey's house. How amazing would that be? Not only would Michelle be able to do amazing things, she, there's some land for sale right next to our house and she would love to buy it so that they could expand and have more room and you know, have a lot more little rooms for the dogs. Um, but it also would allow us to, to fulfill the next step of the dream, which is educating other rescue groups about how to do what we do so that these dogs have an incredible quality of life. There are, we don't adopt dogs out of Monkey's House because we don't have the liability insurance for that, but Michelle works very closely with other rescue groups. So if we have a dog come in that we, is what we call an imposter, which is they're not as old as they were supposed to be and they're not as um, sick as they were supposed to be, and we can put them back together, then we will transfer them over to one of uh, the rescue groups that Michelle works with and they will get them adopted. We also have a few Monkey's House dogs that are in permanent foster care in homes outside of Monkey's House, but Monkey's House maintains um, uh, control over their their medical status and their help. So, um, you know, we'll supply the food for them and we'll supply the medical care for them, but they're living in someone else's house. Um, if we feel that's a better fit for them. So uh, we ha Michelle had a dream, we have a bigger dream, and the dream is just rolling quickly, and we're so, so, so excited about it. So if you haven't seen that video, please look for the video. It's on my page, it's on the Monkey's House page, it's on Michelle's page. Uh, share, 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 share. See if you can get all of your friends to share it and see it and everybody to, to donate a dollar to Monkey's House because it would make a, a, just a, such a huge difference. And my God, if everybody donated $5, imagine where we'd be. We, we could just help millions of dogs. It would be just amazing. So anyway, the Morgan Method, maybe someday I'll get it written. Michelle says that she really, I keep telling her to write it down. And she says, no, I think the one of us that's the author should do that. <laughs> so I just, uh, I need a little time off to do that. But um, in the meantime, um, there's a grumpy face. Um, okay, I've got a busy day at work, I'm sure, because it's Monday. It's always crazy. So everybody have a wonderful day. Enjoy it. Uh, tomorrow, I don't know what time my mom's surgery is. I won't know until later today. So um, hang around around 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll try to, to be here if we don't have to zip out. I don't think we'll have to get out that early in the morning. So we should be at 8 a.m. Um, what a wonderful dream. It is a wonderful dream. So, uh, and our music people are working on adding the barking dogs. So we'll see what happens with that. Everybody have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow.